Hey guys, Tori with H and T. Hawk. It is Saturday. Uh, it's vape day. It's vape Saturday. day. Yeah, it's Saturday vape day. <laughs> Sometime in March. Yeah. Vlog day. Vlog day. <laughs> Woohoo! We're we're out, we're on our two weeks. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're we're two weeks. Well, wow. this is the first time it's actually been two weeks. I think we did it one time before. Um. Okay, we may have. But hey, it's vlog day. We're back. Uh, we got some uh, some pretty interesting stuff to talk about. We got a good. We got some equipment to talk about. We we are doing the the DT50 today. Yes, the Dalpo DT50, and the surprise I was talking about is the Smoke Pro, the Smoke X Pro M80 Plus. And we will talk about these here in a little bit. In a moment, huh? Yeah, here in a moment after we get a cup of coffee. And I got I got some more shout outs. More shout outs. I got some more, I got some more shout outs. So you guys that are looking for your shout out, it's coming today. <laughs> Excellent. What do you say? Yeah, I think you know, uh, I think we just uh, kind of get down there and get a look at them, and and then we'll come back up and talk about them and go from there. Okay, sounds good. All right, see you in a bit, guys. All right, here we go. We're back. So the Dopo DT50 uh, box mod. <clears throat> it's uh, got the uh, fire button over here. You have your wattage up and down. You okay? uh, guys got a cute little logo on it. The screen. Let me. See. There it goes. Five on, five off. We're just waiting for it. So once we, oh, let me get it to where you can see it, not me, okay. So we have our wattage readout at the top. It has its own uh, ohm meter, so when you screw your atomizer into it, it'll tell you what your atomizer is. And then, of course, it has your uh, uh, voltage on it as well. And then the little indicator at the top is the, is the battery, so you can see how much battery life. And this one's almost dead. It, uh, the screen is, I mean, it's a good size screen. It's not, a, not any problem seeing the uh, information that's being put out. The uh, 510 connect at the top is a screw. There's no, it's not spring loaded, so you actually have to adjust it up and down with a with a driver. You just like put your screwdriver in there and adjust it up and down. This is a sealed uh, unit. You cannot get to the battery. The uh, the lipo pack on the inside. I don't remember what the ma rating on this thing is, but uh, it's not. It's it's irrelevant. We're we're going to talk about that when we get back down to the. Uh, uh, when we get back up in the normal view anyways. You have your uh, uh, charge port on this side, a little micro USB, you just plug it in and it charges back up. And it takes a, a little bit to charge, but it's not horribly uh, inconvenient. And then of course, you know, whatever the uh, the designs and stuff on it are. Uh, it's just a, I mean, it's not a bad piece of equipment. Nothing phenomenal about it. Uh, operates all right, I suppose. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but we'll talk about that when we get back up in the uh, regular view anyways. So that's basically the look at the uh, DT50. Nothing phenomenal, uh, you know. Just man, it is what it is. So right. yeah, we'll go back up and talk about it. All right, sounds good. All right, guys. So and we are back, back in the up top. So all right, let's talk about it for a second. Uh, remember, these are only our opinions. They have no bearing in reality whatsoever. Not bearing my reality. Okay, but ours is the only reality they have a bearing in. So. So the Dow Power DT50. Um, I'm not a fan. I like the mini. I like the the mini. It's it's still oh, a good the, secondary. The, the mini 50 watt. That thing that is freaking that awesome. is a badass piece of equipment. I still go to it. I still I still uh, it, when I when I'm in the mood for a regulated device, I actually still go to that DT50. Uh, the the uh, the mini 50. This one on the other hand, not a fan of. So so here's why I'm not a fan. Uh, first off, I don't like the way it feels in my hand because. No matter how I grab it, it always, it's just, it's inconvenient and it doesn't feel right. It just always hits me right in the seam of my digits. I don't, I don't like it. Um, the other thing I don't like about it is I don't like where the fire button is at. The, uh, the fire button, I really it should have been on one of the two sides. I don't know why they, they put it down here on the face of that because it, it makes me have to turn it sideways, which doesn't feel good in my hand again. So I'm just, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the fact that, that it's set up with the fire button on the side of it. And I don't like the way it feels in my hand. It just doesn't have a good, uh, it just doesn't have a good design. And that's just my opinion. I, I think that they could have done a lot better job on it. Uh, just, I mean, honestly, eh, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan. So, uh, we did not mention in the, uh, in the up close version. Let me turn it right back on real quick. We didn't mention in the up close version that the, uh, the lockout for this is these these two up and down where you adjust your wattage and stuff. Oh, let me see if I can't get it. So you hold those down, and it actually locks itself out. See it locked? And then to unlock it, you just hold them down again. 
There it goes, and it unlocks it. Uh, I've never understood the concept of a lockout. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get it because you can just turn it off. And that's that's my that's just my take. I don't understand lockouts. Just, just turn them off. Lock ring on mechanical. Yeah, it's, which, a, it's a it's a safety. Yeah, I I just, but for mechanically just uh, well, I mean, for a regulated, why not just turn it off? Yeah. You know, I mean honestly, just just turn it off. Okay. So, but that's my take on it. I'm just not a fan of it. Meh. Ah. Meh. You? Okay. Um. Let's start off with what I like about it. I like the design of the logo. <laughs> <laughs> you like that scorpion? It's actually, it, 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 yeah, I, I like that. That's good. Dotha did a good job. <clears throat> I don't like the fact that the charging port is on the side. It's not passed through. And um, it works. Is that your good thing to say about it? I guess I have two good things. It works, and I really like this logo. Um, my overall opinion? <laughs> there you go. That's my review for the Dolph uh, DT50. <laughs> That's it. So, so what you're saying is you don't like that piece of equipment. I would use it if I had to. If it's the only thing I had. That's what you I, I would use it. <laughs> so if everything else is dead, you have no charge 18650s. If everything was dead, I I might even hazard maybe trying to wire up my atomizer to a car battery. <laughs> or a car battery or an outlet or something. Uh, <laughs> you saw my opinion, and that's all I have. Uh, well, what what do you like then? Don't we have something else to talk about today, don't we? Oh yes, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second when we go up you closely. Because we have the surprise piece today. Yes, surprise piece, and we're going to go up you closely, and uh, we will be with you momentarily. See you in a second. And here we are with the surprise. This is the X Pro M80 Plus by Smoke. This is a regulated mod, regulated box mod. Comes in this nice little display case. Lift that off. Instruction manual. Make sure you read the instruction manual. It's fairly self explanatory, but still, nonetheless, read the instructions. And this is the X Pro M80 Plus. That's it right there. Set that to the side. And here are the contents of the box. Lift that up with the little tab. And then here you have your USB cable. There's a rubberized button cover right here if you so desire. And it even has, let me get it out. There we go. Has a little 510 to Ego adapter for those of you that are using Ego style tanks. Put this away, and we will talk about the Smoke X Pro M80 Plus. And this is it right here. Uh, <clears throat> this is your fire button. Up and down for your adjustment. Press this five times, and it comes on. It has a nice little welcome screen. Here's your readout. Has an atomizer. Even remembers the. Uh, your, your coil on your last one, even when it's not one on there, as you see, I was running a 0.54 coil. Uh, shows your voltage down to the 100s on your discharge, adjusts on uh, an, a tenth of an increment on your wattage, press this button three times, and that gets you to your menu. You can go to wattage, temperature, or mechanical mode. I stay on wattage right now. On the mechanical mode, it just fires like a straight mechanical. And your power, your power is uh, derived off of your coil build. Press it three more times again, and that gets you to your menu. Here's your puff counter. You can set your puff counter to uh, anywhere from zero to 999 if you want to limit how many puffs you want. If you want unlimited, you can set it to zero and you can just puff all day long. For those of you that are trying to control your vaping habit, that is the way to do it. Press it three more times again, and you get to your menu, you just cycle through. You've got your date, time. Uh, it's, it's really, I like this thing a lot. So basically it does everything but get the paper for you. And your coffee, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you get down to your, uh, as you saw that, let me do that again. Press it three times, you cycle through your menu. That's for your temperature control. You can adjust your temperature control up and down for those of you that are in temperature mode. Yeah, because temperature control, a lot of people are going to that. I'm actually coming to 
coming to uh, like the temperature mode and then leave it here. Let me get back to it. There's your power button. Power off. Goodbye. And it turns off. And then I turn it back on. Press it five more times. One, two, three, four, five. And it comes back on. All right. Right here is your micro USB charging port. It is a pass through, which I really like. It's a 4,000 mAh battery. Uh, it's lasted me upwards of eight hours all day, day without charging. So that's pretty good. Uh, it is chrome plated on the top and the bottom. Uh, some people don't, for those that like, uh, don't like fingerprint magnets, may not be for you. Uh, but everything that's juice, everything else, it just wipes right off nice and clean. This is your center pin right here. It is spring loaded. There is a slot in here for a screwdriver. Do not twist it. It does move, but do not twist it. It does not go up and down if you twist it too much. Take a chance of snapping the wire leads down here. And if you do that, you're SOL. That's the only thing. That's the only not great thing about this is that the center pin can be spun. Other than that, that's it. This is a Smoke Pro, Smoke X Pro M80 Plus, and we'll be back up for our opinion in a second. All right, so yeah. that was the Smoke, e the X Pro M80 Plus by Smoke. That's a long name for a really, really good piece of equipment. Um, I've had it in my grubby little hands for two weeks and not had a single issue with it. I mean, it, this it. It fits in the hand just right. The button placement is just right. Um, I don't have a single bad thing, to, negative thing to say about it. I think it could be improved if the center pin, if you couldn't turn it, twist it with the screwdriver. That's just because there's going to be some people out there. Somebody is stick a screwdriver. Somebody's going to stick a screwdriver in there and think that they can adjust and just snap the wires and you're shit out of luck. When that happens, but the, the IPV has the same problem. With, you know, if that happens, recycle bin. That's about all you can do. Well, you could probably send it back to the manufacturer and have them, you know, I don't fix know. it. Ah, uh, you, know, you know what? Don't don't do it. You won't have to find out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it, it is a it is a pass through. You can vape on it while you're passing through. And I'll show you here in just a second. Ha ha ha. Plug it right in. Helps if I put the plug in. Right Helps in. if you just plug in there. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just bought it the screen. That's fine. Meh. All day long. You can vape on this thing all day long. Uh, it does have temperature control. If you're going to run a temperature control mode, you need to go with the, the nickel wire. It doesn't work too well with Canthal. It does work, but performance is it's, poor. It's, it's better with the appropriate equipment. Uh, if you use it with the Canthal, it takes a while for it to ramp up to its temperature. As soon as it hits its temperature, it has a hard time holding it and just basically stops. Uh, temperature control is not designed for Canthal. It is designed for the nickel wire, the NIC 200 or 2000, something like that. Um, but it also has a mechanical mode on it. Put it in mechanical, it works just like a mechanical. The, the power output is dependent on your coil build, not the wattage or voltage going into it. Uh, and it holds it at a constant 3.7 all the way through. That's Four, good. 4,000 milliamp battery. has twin 18650 sealed LiPo batteries in here. Uh, this is, it's a Segeli killer. Uh, I've got a Segeli 100 watt box mod. I really, really like it, but I'll, head and above. I'll choose this all day long over it. The only thing the Segele has on it is it goes up to 100 watts. I've not once gone up to 100 watts. I don't know very many people that vape at 100 watts. As a matter of fact, I don't think I know anybody that vapes at 100 watts. Uh, I don't see the need for it. Honestly, I stick around 35 watts, somewhere around there. He's normally lower. Some, people, some people go up higher to, to 40. I mean, uh, it, it's all about what your vape is. But it's all subjective, too. Yeah, it's, it's about what your vape is, but... This is just, it's a solid piece of equipment, and this is, this is my, my new favorite. Hands down, this is my new favorite. I, I like this thing. So beats the DT50 is what you're saying? Oh, anything beats the DT50. <laughs> the DT50, actually, I found out a good piece for the DT50 by Dogpo. It makes an excellent offshore fishing 
Weight. Weight? Yes. I don't think you're supposed to put that in the water. It's the perfect weight for it, though. <laughs> it's perfectly designed for that weight wise. I don't think you're supposed to. I, you, I, I don't recommend that. But, yeah, that's what the DT-50 is good for, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's our, that's our review. That's our, that's for the guys that came to see the review. That was the review for the DT-50. This was the surprise piece. Uh, he said we were going to have the surprise piece, so we talked about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's what we got. So for you guys that came for the review, it's over. Yep. This is the end of the review. <laughs> and, uh, it's now Smack Target. Shout, uh, shout out and Smack, smack Target. Target. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Smack Target. So you have a, a shout out you wanted to get. Yeah. Uh, Nick, appreciate it. Thanks for the subscribe. Spread the word. I'm, I'm Tell glad, you, Nate. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're keeping you entertained. Uh, hopefully we're keeping you entertained and informed. Uh, that, that's the goal to keep you informed. Yeah. We entertain you. Hey, bonus. 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 Yes, bonus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bonus. Did you see two nostrils? <laughs> oh, there were, today's a two nostril day. Is yeah. it? Yes, it you is. You have two nostrils today. I have two nostrils. <laughs> I can breathe out of two nostrils. You know, for, for those of you that don't have that issue or suffer from allergies or sinus issues like him, um, I, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Don't be a hater. I'm, I'm envious. Don't be a hater. Yes. Um, but, yeah, today's a two-nostril day. I'm happy. It's a two-nostril day. So, you know, hey. Look at you go. <laughs> I'm happy. Look at you go. I'm happy. Man. Both nasal passages. Look, Look at you go. I'm happy. It doesn't happen too often, so it's a good day for me. I have a couple of shout-outs as well. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so, Chris... And Chris's brother, because I can't remember his name. He's horrible about me. Take no offense. I've known him for like 10 years. It took him the better uh, part of two years to remember my name. We saw each other in the hallway every day, and it took him the better part it is, of two years. It was terrible. I'm yeah. horrible with names, so I'm sorry. I know I'm a terrible person. But he says, hey, you, it's because he recognizes your face and he's talking. <laughs> That's exactly so, what it is. Yeah. I know your face hole. <laughs> I know your face hole. <laughs> so, so, Chris, hey, welcome aboard. Chris's brother, hey, welcome aboard, you know. Uh, hopefully we can get the information to you you're looking for. Uh, remember, um, Q&A, comments, questions, anything like that, stick them down in the box, and, and we'll try to answer them as much as we can. Oh, Q&A. I'm glad you said that. Don't forget, Q&A. We're, we're starting this new thing, Q&A. We're going to post the emails downstairs, uh, downstairs, down below, at Tori, Tori at, yeah, it's downstairs, at Tori at H&T.com or Hawk at H&T.com. It's H&T Vaping. H&T Vaping. Thank vaping. You. I'm so excited about being it's able to read your book. H&T Vaping. Oh, I don't need <laughs> <laughs> Tori or Hawk, either one. Yeah, either <laughs> one. We'll, we'll post the, the links down uh, down below, downstairs, almost sit downstairs. Again. Downstairs, yeah. Again. <laughs> down there. So, yeah. so we actually have a couple of Q and A's. We do. We do. We actually have a couple of Q and A's, and not because people sent them in an email, because somebody actually asked me. Yeah. So we got to talk. Over, yeah. Spoke to our face uh, Which, which happens. We're good with that. It's, it's all good. So, um, mechanicals, real quick. Let me, let me talk about these because uh, some, some guys don't know. Uh, and it's because they're new to vaping and they, they haven't experienced that, that problem before. Uh, and, and a lot of times it comes from where you walk into a shop, they set you up and you walk out again and there's no follow up. There's no more information they provide. They just yeah. pick you up and very you're gone. True. Very true. So we were talking about conductivity, connectivity. I'm sorry, connectivity for mechanicals because I got some guys that I, that I know and they're vaping and, and all of a sudden their vape like drops. They're, they're just having a horrible experience with it. And they can't figure out why. They check their atomizers, they check their coils, they rebuild stuff, and it's still horrible, and they can't figure out why. So so the, the reason why is because there's corrosion on the contacts, okay? And so what you have to do, I'm just going to take my top cap off Cor real quick. Corrosion, or actually it's, it's been varnished. It's not actual corrosion. Yeah, well, well uh, there's that you typically think of when you have yeah. an electronic device, the battery is all corroded. That's completely different. So what happens is, is your connector, okay, where your contact comes in, winds up getting a, a, a layer of junk on it, basically, okay? And uh, so I talked about this in, in, a, in an earlier video um, where I was disgusted with another piece of equipment. Um, but, <laughs> but you can go back and watch that video. But what happens is, is your contact gets mucked up. Okay, and so you actually have to clean it off. Um, and I've discovered, like, if you wear jeans, you can just rub it on your jeans, you know, on your pants, um, or you can get a 
Uh, my favorite, the easiest way, get a number two pencil, flip it over, take your eraser, and it gets, cleans that junk right off of That's an old electrician's trick from the old contact days. And it's the same thing. Mechanics know that. Your point's on your distributor. Just rub that junk off, and you're good to go. And you're good to go again. Um, remember, if you're going to rub this on something, screw the contact all the way down so it's not flexing, okay? And you need to clean the top contact and the bottom contact where the fire button is at on the inside. You push it out. It's going to poke up a little bit. Scrub it so that it's cleaned off, okay? Uh, because if you have a poor contact with your battery, you're not going to get the discharge you're looking for. And then, of course, that's going to be poor power to the atomizer. You're going to have a poor vaping. Yeah, it's just you're going to wind up with one of those little wispy vapes, and you're not going to be happy. You know? Yeah, it's kind of like, so yeah, it's kind of back in the easiest way, back in the analog tobacco days, smoking a half butt cigarette or a moist cigarette is kind of the same thing. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's just, something's missing. You're just not getting it. It's not yeah. working. So, so, so clean your, clean your equipment. That's how you keep your, your contacts good so that they make good contact with the battery. And then, of course, make sure you have a fresh battery if you're running a mechanical. And that includes the contact on the base of your atomizer. You need to take that off and clean it. And you should clean your gear every day. Unscrew your stuff, wipe all the e-juice off because it's going to build up some condensation and stuff, and you're going to flood your atomizer eventually. It's going to happen because you're going to put too much in there. You're not going to remember whatever. So just clean you your that earlier today. Uh, I did. I did that before we started this. So so contact-wise, okay, for battery, make sure all your contacts are clean. Make sure it's all nice and happy. Um, the second thing was uh, what happens when you strip out your atomizer. Your pr uh, in yeah. a nutshell, you're just so well. You're just your ass up. Um, so the the you're, little you're tango uniform. <laughs> For those of you that are, that are military, you will understand exactly what that means. For the female viewers, I'm not going to spell out exactly. I'm not going to say exactly let it go. What means, but you'll know what let it mean. go. But right here, if you happen to strip out the screws here on the base, strip the threads out on the base. Chunk it, go get another one, unless you're a, a machinist and you can handle uh, running a, a fine, yeah, uh, the fine tap. Uh, if you have a tap and die set, you can take your tap and re-tap it. But if you don't and you don't know, then you're just, you're messed up. Yeah, just, um, go, just go get it. But we're talking about the threads on the inside of the, the actual post, post where the post, post goes in, not, not the, the screw. Because the screw you can replace. If you strip the top screw, you just take a pair of pliers and unscrew it until you can get it finger loose and then you just... Uh, what causes that is moose and stuff. Oh, yeah. Moose. Right. Um, yeah. I have not done that, but yes, yeah, you, you snug it down. Everything is finger tight on these things, okay? It's just snug. You just, the moment you hit resistance, you're like, oh, there it is, right? Okay? Because when you start wrenching stuff down, you wind up stripping out screws or over tightening stuff and cut your you wire. Mess up your, mess up your, and that, that's the whole thing. That's why we tell people when you build your coil on your atomizer, everything snug, fired a couple times, check everything. So what happens is that wire gets hot and cold, and when metal gets hot and cold, it expands, contracts, so the connection is going to loosen a little bit. Just go back and re-snug everything up, and just keep snugging it up until it's done. Yeah, and, and you're good to go. And that's a, and that's another thing. If you run into like you cleaned everything up, you're like, okay, I'm all clean, all my all my contacts are good, and you're still getting poor vapor production. Okay, check your check your screws, make sure everything's screwed in. Let me get a little screwdriver. Check your screws. And you get your screwdriver on there and just kind of go skook and make sure everything's skook. Nice and tight. Skook. Okay. And it's just, it's finger tight. Everything's finger tight. I don't, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Don't, don't over tighten things. Okay. Just snug, snug. Yeah. You don't need to tighten it. You're not putting an engine together. No, it's not an engine. Well, it is an engine, but it's not, not that kind of engine. Finger tight, finger tight. Uh, so that's that's uh, that was my Q and A stuff. So there's my Q and A's uh, for the guys that I was talking to. You see the video. Uh, we've already had this discussion, but maybe somebody else can find it useful. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and here's the good part. <laughs> smack talk. We, we got, got some talking. serious. Oh, we got some serious smack talking to do. Uh, the first one, I, I'm going to get on my ho high horse on this one. Uh, for those of you here in Texas, that's us. Uh, Senate Bill 97 was voted favorably out of the Health and Human Services Committee and has been placed on the intent calendar to go to the floor of the Senate to be passed. This is not good. In a nutshell, Senate Bill 97 uh, unnecessarily imposes restrictions on Internet sales of vaping-related equipment, even a battery, an 18650. What it's requiring is 
a photocopy of an ID proving the age, 18 or over, of the purchaser for each transaction. Which is and, a load of junk. Yeah, it's a load of junk. Um, the the big issue I have with it, it's potentially can inc increase the cost of $6 per transaction. Which is, and I understand there's a whole bunch of, we don't know what's going on, and so we're trying to, like, react as best as possible, you know. Uh, and this bill actually has age restriction built into it, which is one of the reasons why good. Age we're, restriction is good. A lot of people are favorable with it because, you know, you shouldn't be selling nicotine products to people under 18. Nicotine is a stimulant. It's like caffeine. And quite honestly, you know what? You shouldn't be giving that to kids under 18 years old. And if you're selling stuff to kids under 18 year old, shame on you. Okay, You shouldn't be doing that. Nicotine is, is an addictive substance. And we will not... We'll not deny that. I'll be the first yeah. to tell you. It's an addictive substance. That's one of the main things on cigarettes that can get you hooked. Now, on analog tobacco. But let me put it in perspective for you. You're saying I can't sell a battery, a battery to someone under the age of 18 online. That's the same thing as saying that someone that is 16 or 17 can't go to the corner store and buy a double-A battery. It's the same exact thing. That's ridiculous. Makes no sense. It is idiotic and stupid. He doesn't like that word, but in this case, it fits. It is stupid. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that word. But, but, the, but the fact remains is that is one of the things that, that you look at. And you're like, okay, seriously, how, how unreasonable are we going to become in this? You know? uh, I disagree with some of the regulations anyways because the guys that are vaping zero, I mean, there's no nicotine in it. Yeah. So what are we screaming about? Are we screaming about the fact that we think it's a gateway? Are we looking at it and saying, oh, this is going to lead people to traditional tobacco? Because if that's what we're screaming, I hate to break the bad news to you. Research already says that's not the fact. That's not the fact. That's why you can go and you can look at tobacco use and see a decline among uh, young adults. And they measure young adults from, like, I think it's, like, 13 to 21 or something like that or 25. Yeah. Uh, but you can see a decline in tobacco use with the incline in uh, e-cigarette use. And it's because tobacco is old. It's old news. Old people do it. Young people don't want to be associated with old people. Okay? So that's a ridiculous argument, and I, and I think it's retarded. Oh, um, well, I think that... Well, goofy. I shouldn't say yeah, goofy. We did that before. I, yeah. um, it's goofy. Apologies. You do it, okay? Uh, but the thing is, you know, the, the younger people that are vaping, um, hey, as long as you're 18 and over, I'm good with it. I don't have an issue with it. The people that sell this stuff to... Uh, I'm just going to say underage. Shame on Shame you. On that, you. That's, that's bad. That's bad for everybody. It's not worth the nickel that you just got. That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, what? I understand their, I understand their, their, their thing, but it's just, it's not, it's not useful, okay? And, and research keeps coming out every time somebody screams something ridiculous, okay? Research keeps coming out that points to the fact that what they're screaming is ridiculous, you know? Now we're gonna post some links, we'll, we'll, in the body down in the description area, we'll post a couple of links to some of the places where you can actually go and read this research because I believe that being informed is an important thing, okay? Uh, so. Well, yeah, it's, it's funny, one of the things you're talking about, um, now I'm looking at it right here, it's on a e -cig e-cigalternative.com, I'll post the link here. Um, it's a little blurb. Uh, it says, e-cigarettes save lives. And like I said, we're, we're going we're gonna to post it real quick. But in a nutshell, uh, Derek Yock, I believe, previously had a tobacco control at the WHO World Health Organization. That's what WHO stands for. Yes, that's what it stands for. He says he understands why anti-smoking activists are so distrustful of vaping and is, and is one of those activists. However, he's one of the activists, anti-vaping. However, he also acknowledges that the evidence is clear. E-cigarettes are saving lives. He states everyone involved with tobacco control needs to make up for 50 years of ignoring the simple reality. Smoking kills, nicotine does not. This is published February 2015. Like I said, we're going to have that... Uh, we'll, we'll put it down there. We'll, we'll have that link posted downstairs. Um, <laughs> you're downstairs. Hey, it works. It works. I'm stuck on downstairs today, so yeah, it works. Uh, so, but the other thing that you wanted to talk about. Oh, I'm still gonna call California. We're coming at you. 
<coughs> okay, caught them off guard on that one. I did. California, we are coming at you hard. Okay, so seriously, seriously, first off, I get the fact that these guys, these, these politician guys and these guys that are making money off of big pharmaceutical companies and big tobacco companies and stuff like that, I understand they're railing against e-cigarettes and all electronic devices. Oh, right? I mean the guys that have products that have horrible side effects. Yeah, those guys. Those because guys. because you're you're losing money, and I get that. You're losing cash. You're like, oh, these guys contributed boat tons of money to me, and now they're losing money, so they're breathing down my back. I'm not a hater on you. I get it. You know what? You're making your cash the way you're making your cash on the backs of other people, but still, I get it, okay? But the media, come on, seriously? Why are you reporting non-stories? Why are you throwing this stuff out there without doing a shred of, of research yourself? Okay, Because I'm a monkey, and I can FGI it. I can just go on and go, boop, and look it up. So why are you putting out information that is misleading or wrong? Okay, Because there's plenty of research out there that's already been done, and they're doing more. Okay. And every time you, you get a hold of it, you put a negative slant on it, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like that paper uh, that, the, that the guys did for the Journal of uh, New England, New England Journal of Medicine, you know? Come on, seriously, why do you keep doing this? Are, are you making money off of this too? Grow up, all right? Uh, in California, they're, they're warning people uh, because of, of their, their health. an outbreak and epidemic. Yeah. Uh, Woo! Outbreak and epidemic. Be Dr. careful. Run for the hills. Right. Dr. Chapman, Dr. Ron Chapman, he's, uh, part of the, the, uh, state health, uh, organization. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it is he does. He is the state health officer for the California Department of Health. So he's, he's putting it out there so that, that way people know that this is an epidemic because apparently, uh, he's concerned. Because of all the carcinogens and toxins and everything else that, that goes into this, uh, devoid of the fact that there's only four things in it, and we've already seen research that shows that, that we're not producing, when you're operating this equipment the right way, we're not producing levels comparable to cigarettes, and, and nothing is on fire here, or it's not supposed to be, okay? So I went and I looked at the poison control numbers because I wanted to know what poison control said about these contacts because they're citing these these huge dramatic jumps. There was something like uh, seven or or some I don't remember oh, the number. It's low. I'll, I'll pull it for you real quick. And this is from NBCNews.com. We'll post the link as well. Also, so you can go and read it yourself. Uh, says the number of calls made to California's poison control centers involving vaping exposures to children increased from seven in 2012. To a whopping 154 in 2014, the state reported. 154. That's an epidemic. Now, for so, comparison, real quick, so according to the Association of Poison, it's, it's poison, control, control. poison control Centers, uh, laundry detergent packets, you know those little bitty packets you just throw in your dishwasher and shut the door and go. Um, not the liquid ones, a little. And these are these are kids that are five and under. Okay. Uh, let's see. What does it say? Uh, in 2012, Poison Control received a little over 6,000 calls for poison control related to well, children laundry detergent packets. and laundry detergent packets. And in 2014, almost 12,000 calls. So. Let's be realistic. Let's look at the numbers. Which is which imposes a greater health risk to the public? Laundry detergent packets do. Not this. Pull your head out. So so when you when you're gonna call something an epidemic, okay, get realistic. All right. Don't don't be dreaming stuff up just because you're like, oh I like that, it's costing me money. Whatever, dude. Okay? Grow up. I just I hate that. It drives me crazy. Yeah. So that's my call out for California. So the vapors in California, you guys need to get busy because you're getting railroaded. Yes, you, need to, you need to pull research out and start waving it at these guys and telling them no. And for the, the guys that are in offices that you can vote for, you need to send them uh, messages and emails and snail mail or however you get it to them and let them know that you vote. And then when it comes time to vote, if, they, if they're not doing what you think they should be doing, stop voting them in. Okay. Vote them out. Do a little bit of homework and find somebody that's doing what you want them to do and vote for that person and let people know, you know what? I'm a vapor and I'm a voter. Okay. And that counts. 
So this this garbage about freaking dreaming stuff up. You don't have to dream stuff up. If you come up with valid research, okay, people will listen. You don't have to try to scare folks. It's about it's that is. That's exactly what it is. Valid research. Try it. It's an amazing thing. Oh, so that's my that's my my bitch on on made up junk. You, you guys know how I am. <laughs> you know, I get excited about those things. So, that's your rant, rant. That's my rant. I'm that's my rant. I'm done with my rant. Okay. I'm okay. Still on your <laughs> soapbox? Yes. No, I'm good. You know. Okay. All right. You want to borrow it? No, I really don't have anything to. Guys, Texas. Senate Bill 97. I'm going to post a link for the call to action so you can send your, your local representatives saying, hey, this is not good. It's not good for anybody overall. It's going to kill the, it, no, it's not going to kill, but it's yeah, going to seriously, it's going to seriously harm the businesses, the economy. I mean, come on, it's not good. And for Texas, come on. Texas is not income tax state. It's sales tax. You're going to reduce the amount of sales tax that you can mm -hmm. get. So it, it, it's bad overall. Bad, bad, bad. You're cutting into profit here. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's not. The state's losing money. Yeah. The that's, state, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it is. The state's losing money. Yeah. The state's going to lose money. And that's no, no good. good. You should no good. you should be cutting into the state's money. No. Okay. No. I'm just saying. You know, we're we're a strong state. Okay. You should be cutting into the state's money. You should be looking at, at your. I'm talking to the senator guys now. Okay. You should be looking at your own budgets because you're cutting into your own budget. Okay. Yes, this is money that you're going to lose because you're going to impose this, and a lot of people are are going to stop selling stuff online, and you're going to wind up with less tax revenue. Okay. okay. Grow up. Think about what you're doing for a minute. Let's be realistic and let's use good sound judgment. I agree with that. Um, good sound judgment. I think that's a good call. Good sound judgment. So that's what we got. You got anything else? No. I don't have any. Oh, hey, guys. That giveaway, I don't know. Do you know we still have a giveaway going? Yeah. The giveaway's still going on. Go back to the recent. <laughs> no, no, it's the, it's like, the, it's like one yeah, it's one first of the ones. first videos. It's still going Go on. Go look. Go look. <laughs> 100 is magic number. Yeah. So. Unless, unless I change my mind. In which case, we'll just give it to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100 is magic number right now. Still there. Unless he changes his mind. But, yeah. They're still giving it away. Either way. Yeah. It's just a matter of food. You know? True. That's what I got. That's all I got. Yeah. Oh, I, I got another use for the DT50. Yeah. Paperweight. Paperweight? Yeah. But I can see that. Yeah. You like to put down? Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to keep something from blowing away. But to be honest, it's kind of light too, so if the one's strong enough, it might knock it off. <laughs> He's not a fan. <laughs> Which isn't to say it's a bad product. We're not saying that. I just don't like it. <laughs> it's subjective. Somebody else might get a hold of that and be like, it's the best thing in the world. That's your opinion. My opinion is, it's not a good product. And opinions, you know the rest. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> opinions count in my reality. <laughs> that's what I got. Okay. Maybe not yours. No. So, so that's what we got. We're good. Uh, uh, nothing. I'm pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So, all right, guys, this is Hawk. This is Tori with h &T. Remember, vaping is going to kill big tobacco. I promise you, watch and see. You can stick that in your tank and vape it. <laughs> Rock forward. Yep. Rock forward with your bad self. Hmm. You're just going to let that run again? Huh? Yeah, sure. We're just vaping again. Yeah, just vaping again. <laughs> I've been puffing the hell out of this thing. I gotta turn it back up. I'm killing it. I love this thing, man. I, oh. <laughs> I, I really like this thing. It's good. If you could teach it to get the paper, you'd be great. Yeah. Bring me the paper and coffee in the morning. It'd be fantastic. Dude, this would be the best device ever. I mean, wow. I mean, I'm really that impressive. Get you a vaping robot. Yeah, there you go. Vape and roll. Just sit there on the couch and hey, puff. You, know, you just bring it to a hookah to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm just saying. Yeah, man. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this thing. It's good. That's pretty much all I got. Yeah. So I'm out of coffee anyway, so I'm really on steam. There you go. 
。うん。中学ぐらいしか